Hello again, Daniel here again bringing you another Dwarf Fortress tutorial. Uh, funny story, I actually managed to record for about an hour and then have that all deleted, uh, which kind of sucks because now I've had to start again. But yeah, we're going to continue on straight away. <clears throat> This is the menu you'll see shortly after on the previous embark menu, pressing E for embark. I'm going to go ahead and read out. It says you have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond you. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Asen Abod, which is your parent dwarven civilization. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labour comes sustenance, whether by bolt, plough or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings. Here the wolves get hungry, a new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. And this is the name of our, for our fort. It is called Bermessia. In dwarven and in English, earth showered. What a brilliant name. Strike the earth, it says. Okay, so from here, you can press escape. The first thing you want to do is pause the game. But your game won't look like this. It will look like this initially. It will be split into three sections. I have no idea what this window is, but it does not serve any purpose. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it serves some kind of purpose. Some people do play with it. But quite frankly, I don't see the purpose in it. I've, I've obviously played for quite a long time. And I've not really ever used it. It's a bit pointless. I prefer just to have a lot more area. So you can have it look like this by pressing tab twice. Or you can change it so you have nothing. If you know the hotkeys, you can do that, you know. You can just press hotkeys through it uh, at all. But yeah, going back here. So, first of all, what do you see? Our surroundings are very flat. There is nothing but snow and trees for miles and miles, which is kind of a good thing. Uh, here... We have our dwarves. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and teach you your first hot key. Uh, it's K for look around, as you can see, it's right here. K look around. This basically allows you to summon up a cursor, which when you hover over, will show you what the hell you're looking at. So here we have snow covered shrub with a pile of snow on top of it. We have trees such as ash, maple, more ash, more maple, more maple, more ash, chestnut. Yeah, like I said, a lot of different trees there, a lot of different stuff. But yeah, that's K for you. You can use this to do a lot of things. It'll help be very useful when you're trying to learn and trying to understand what you're looking at. In time, you know, I can say, you know, that's a tree, that's a spider web, that's a cave wall, whatever. I can basically, uh, I basically know what I'm looking at without having to press K over it. In time, you know, you can do that too. So you'll take quite a long time though. Uh, but yeah, going from that, I'm also going to teach you another great menu, which you'll be using probably the first big 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 important menu we're going to use it to chop us down some trees because obviously we did embark for woodcutter which is one of the essentials that you need to chop down trees although i think i said i'm not sure but one thing that's quite different to other things such as rpgs is where you don't actually have to be skilled in in woodcutting to be able to chop down trees it's not actually a necessity it's just something that makes it faster uh, and also, if I had a, high, a higher skilled carpenter, for example, not only would it be faster, but it would also make a higher quality goods. You know, if I made a table, a, like a, a level zero carpenter it could make a table, just like another one could, but obviously he wouldn't make it as nice as the other one. It wouldn't be as worth as much money. Uh, you know, you can't tr uh, trade that for quite as much. But yeah, going back into it, designations is right here. It's going to be our first very important hotkey. There's a lot of different uh, designations here, but the first... Uh, the first two that we're going to focus on are mine and chop down trees. These these designations do have most functionality. Although you do have a cursor, you can click on stuff. You know, I, I, I press D, go to, go to chop down trees. That's highlighted, and then I can click on trees, and that will be designated the chop down. This basically gives your dwarves a job to do. It designates uh, designates a tree, uh, an area to mine, an area to chop down trees, whatever. Uh, obviously, with the cursor, this cursor, you can also uh, make a big box like so to chop down lots of lots of trees. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, it's very important, you know. As soon as you're not gonna be doing anything else, it's a good idea to chop down, chop yourself some down some trees. But I'm gonna introduce another very important utility. It's external. It isn't made by Tolly. It's a very useful utility, though. It's used by a lot of dwarf forest players, uh, and it is called dwarf therapist. When you first load up Dwarf Therapist, when you have a game running, 
it will look like this. It may look like quite a lot uh, when you first load it up, but really it's not that much. Uh, so obviously you can see, you know, you just go along here and correspond. So I can see that this first dwarf is my weaponsmith and armor smith. That's all very important. I can see carpentry and woodcut. I can see miner, masonry, all that kind of stuff. And the great thing about this is, not only does it let you have a bigger, uh, a bigger uh, view of, uh, if you know what what jobs and labors that you uh, dwarves have assigned, uh, it also allows you to assign and remove labors. Uh, and like I said several times, but it's very important, you don't have to be skilled in something to be able to do it. These little white squares will progressively get bigger as they become more experienced, and as you can see there's an experienced thing, Boba, it says experience 3500 out of 4500. Uh, yeah, I'll obviously go up as, you know, if he, if he makes a table, you get a little bit of experience, that kind of thing. Uh, it all just mounts up, but like I said, you could have this miner, you know, I can make him a mason just by doing that. And then if I, he could make, you know, make a table out of stone, but he wouldn't be as good, he wouldn't be as fast. But he can still do it, he can do anything, he can build anything that uh, my my more skilled mason could. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that back as my uh, minus. So anyways, going back to our trees that I've designated to be cut down. Uh, this trees and anything else basically... You know, it requires a certain labor active on a certain dwarf for them to be able to perform it. You know, if I didn't, if I was burning wood, for example, I'd have to have the wood burning labor active on somebody, on a dwarf. And by the way, you've got to uh, click commit pen and changes to uh, actually modify it. If you just do this and then go back in the game, it won't be changed. Uh, it's very simple though. Uh, but yeah, say for example, I'm burning wood. If I don't have somebody with uh, the wood burn labor active, nobody will burn the wood. It'll just be left as a job forever because nobody can perform it. It's quite simple, really. But yeah, our trees currently are obviously going to be cut down because we do have a wood cut and we do some things require tools. For example, uh, wood cutting requires a copper, well, not a copper battle axe, a battle axe or a training axe. Any kind of axe can be used by my wood cutter and can be and cut down these trees. So. <clears throat> Once we have our trees cut down, we're going to go ahead and finally delve into the earth. Generally, I recommend uh, digging into the side of the earth, uh, in, in the side of a mountain, but in this case, seeing as we're on a very, pardon me, flat uh, land, we can't really afford to do that. So we're going to have to use a new designation. First one is downward staircase and upward staircase. So it's a bit hard to describe the whole staircase thing, but basically you need to put a downward staircase at the top of it and then a upward staircase at the bottom of it. In between I can fill however I want. I can I, I mean I can fill I've got to fill with up down staircases. This is the filler in between the uh, in between the staircases. It's kinda of like a sandwich. So you make a nice sandwich and the up and down staircases are the bread of the sandwich. It finishes the sandwich. It ensures that everything stays together nicely. That's actually an awful analogy and I shouldn't have said that, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, it's a bit hard to describe them, like I said, but in time, you know, it's something you'll grow very used to. It's something very simple when you think of it in your head, but something to describe, it's a bit harder considering nobody's played. Oh my God, I just skipped out on a fundamental. Okay, I need to describe how I went up and down the floor. This game, although it's 2D, obviously, 2D overhead, whatever you want to call it, it is in fact three dimensional. We have the X dimension, no, the X dimension, the Y dimension, and we have the Z dimension, or third dimension. This allows you to go up and down levels. So as you can see, we're going, we're currently on the zero level. I'm going up some, going down some, that kind of stuff. Uh, and this is done by using shift and either uh, comma to go up and period or dot to go down. So, yeah, again, this will be something very natural that you understand in time. If we go down here, though, we'll see where, we've, uh, where we're going to make our fort. We can see there is, in fact, if we press K, I don't know what it is, but you can use K to find out. It's an ice wall. Uh, and this is, in fact, the brook that we embark next to. It's the brook uh, that's frozen over due to the fact that it's quite a cold area to embark in. But yeah, now that we've got our trees designated, we're going to designate ourselves a nice little fort. So first of all, I recommend you do something like this. You can paint it with a, a mouse cursor, you know, whatever you want. Uh, but I'm going to make this six six wide on either end and then extend that a little bit. And then I'm going to make a large, this is a meeting hall, by the way. 
I'll explain them in all very soon. But this here is going to be my stockpile area. And if you wonder what these areas are, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and describe them right now. These are something called a murky pool. Uh, and murky pools are basically pools of water uh, unconnected to a river. Uh, they're finite, whereas a river is an infinite. Uh, and the, yeah, like I said, these are finite, so they're not an infinite source of water. They're just like a patch of water. You can use it <clears throat> to irrigate ground, ground to make a farm, but uh, like I said, uh, there's lots of things for later, so I'm gonna keep that for later. Uh, but this is gonna be my big uh, stopper room. Uh, so I'm gonna go, once I've uh, got this big room, I'm gonna go ahead and make some little side rooms. These will have my workshops, but I'll go on to workshops. Probably in the next part, I don't know, I might be able to fit in this one, so one, two, three. Uh, so I just recommend you do it exactly how I do, if you don't want to, you know, make any mistakes. In fact, this is a bit wide. One, two, three, one, two, three. By the way, most workshops are six, we uh, three by three wide, uh, but some are five by five. But that's that's why I've made these areas five, uh, three by three. Uh, so I think that's our stockpile quite done. So we have a downway into the forest. We have a nice area for a stockpile. We have some workshops and what comes next? Something very essential being our lovely bedrooms for our dwarves. So I'm gonna go ahead once again. I'm sure you should be relatively familiar with staircases by now. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a downward staircase and an upward staircase at the bottom. And I'm gonna use this, oops, it is used. I'm gonna use this as my bedrooms for my little dwarves. So I'm going to extend this, extend this, extend this and this, and then I'm going to use this to connect so I can expand upon it if I feel the need to. So I'm going to go ahead and make ourselves some bedrooms. One thing to know about dwarves is the fact that they aren't, although they are creatures that enjoy a little bit of luxury, they aren't, uh, they don't need luxury, they can survive without, they'll be quite happy. So I personally recommend two by two rooms. Uh, one thing that does require luxury though is nobles. But I'll get on that later. <laughs> uh, so at the minute we have eight rooms here. I can make some on the opposite side as well if I feel the need to be. But at the minute we do have uh, only seven dwarves. As that that's all you can embark all or you can embark with. Uh, so these this amount of rooms will suffice as well as for our next migration wave. I'll get out the migration waves later. So they are all designated nicely. But I'm gonna go, go ahead and remove these staircases. So for now, my dwarves won't start digging down here. You know, they can't, they don't have the staircase to get down there. I'm just gonna add the staircases when I want them to. And I'll want them to do that uh, after I've mined out here. One thing to note though, is obviously ice falls and it turns into water again. Uh, so one kind of thing that I've kind of overlooked in my uh, designation here is the fact that this is a big icy pool. Uh, this murky pool will turn into water uh, during the uh, during the summer, so I definitely want to mine out all this ice so it won't melt and turn into water. This isn't something huge; it's very situational. You know, you you might not need to do it. But yeah, once you've designated everything, you can go ahead and press space, and you will unpause the game, and everything, <coughs> pardon me, will start to happen. Uh, as you can see, we're currently mining out a sandy clay loam thing. That's what the uh, sandy lo loamy clay things always look like. They always look like this. But yeah, I think that's our part done for now. In this, we've learned how to designate things. We've learned a few of the designation features. We've learned how to pause and pause the game. We've learned how to look around. Uh, and next thing, we're probably going to learn about stockpiles and workshops. Some very, 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 very important things that are very integral and something very hugely useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to uh, help.